CataractCoach.com, cataract surgery and angle closure, expert management of a tough case with a very shallow anterior chamber. Now, our guest surgeon sent this video in showing a patient who had chronic angle closure, anterior chamber depth is about one and a half millimeters only. And so now, starting off with making multiple paracentesis incisions, and that's probably going to be to place some iris hooks. Now, if you are making these incisions for iris hooks, be sure to angle them downward like he's doing here. That's very helpful. And that iris hooks, you can put four of them or even five of them. You also need to make a paracentesis, which is going to be a little bit wider incision and a different angle. So now going inside the eye, you can try to break any synechia that may exist here, put some viscoelastic, and now placing the iris hooks. Now, iris hooks, we've talked about placing these. Place them initially and put some tension on there and then go around and then you can uh, tighten them up a, a little bit further if you desire. By angling those pairs and TCs a little bit downwards, it makes it a lot easier to uh, access that iris margin. So here's the incision. I like the incision long length, which is helpful here. More viscoelastic. Now getting the capsule is done. Going to be tough here. Very shallow anterior chamber. You can try some extra um, heavy disperse, uh, cohesive viscoelastics. You can use one of those viscoadaptive ones. That can help. You can also use a smaller forceps like you're doing here, being very careful not to gape or distort the incision. You could also do, and we've shown this before, pars plana partial or brief anterior vitrectomy to help create some room. Just be careful if it's a tiny eye or nanothalamic eye, you've got to ask yourself, where's that pars plana? Could be unusual anatomy. Important here to get this rexus done, refill with viscoelastic as many times as you need to. There's no issue there. Take your time. A good rex is going to be key in this case. I love the idea of refilling with viscoelastic there, creating more space. That viscoelastic fill is going to be a temporary thing. I'd probably still just use my traditional dispersive viscoelastic, being very cautious not to distort the incision, and maybe refilling a time or two like is done here. So now the rex has been done. Just make sure it's not a baby rexus. A little higher dissection. Now, there's not a lot of room in the anterior chamber, right? Very shallow AC. So this is a great case where you want to debulk the nucleus in the bag. So this is a case where doing some grooves like a divide and conquer technique or a stop and chop is really helpful to get a lot of extra working space. Remember, if you just do a quick chop in the bag, then you get four quadrants. Each one's like 25%. But if you debulk it a lot by doing some grooves here and do a divide and conquer, then each quadrant is obviously less volume. It's a little bit smaller. Maybe it's 20% of the total nuclear volume. So here you go, initial groove being done. And this is also the densest part of the nucleus. So now rotating at 180 to continue the groove. I like that idea as well. Sometimes in these small eyes, especially with a smaller rex, you can't access that sub-incisional space too well. And so getting that uh, rotated 180 is very helpful. So you're splitting the nucleus, cracking it, separating the two halves, and now a divide and conquer. So listen, I'm a big fan of chop. I love Vago chop. It's my go-to, my fastball. But in a case like this, there's a lot to be said for doing divide and conquer or stop and chop because the added benefit of debulking the central nucleus, which is, of course, the densest part. So now each quadrant is smaller than 25%, maybe 20-ish percent of the total nuclear volume. Those can each be brought up now and aspirated pretty easily. And this is going very well. And so this is a tough case to do. I do like the idea of the iris hook. Keeps the iris out of your way. You don't want to do a pupil expansion ring in most of these cases, and that's my opinion, because that takes up volume too, and you're putting more stuff and crowding the anterior chamber even more. It's a little harder to place. I think they have more flexibility with the iris hooks. So I do like the idea of iris hooks, and I think this is going very nicely. Cortex removal here. Again, you may want to do by manual if you have trouble accessing some of the sub incisional space. But it looks like our guest surgeon here, Dr. Okar, is doing a great job of accessing that area just with the coaxial. Here's our fill of viscoelastic. Let's get the eye well in the eye. These tend to be hyperopic guys, so higher eye well power. Keep that in mind. If you may have too tight an incision, you may have to have a higher um, um, eye well power, like 28, 30 diopters, and therefore a larger incision required to get the lens in because of the bigger injector tip. So now you can see it's a 6 millimeter optic, probably like a 4.5 millimeter rexus. That looks good, taking all the hooks out. One more trick you can do here now is that you can actually go inside there and grab the iris with your caps rexus forceps and pull the iris out of the angle. Help get that angle to open up a little bit more. You can do that for about a good 360. And just to make sure you don't have iris still caught up in that angle. 
break any peripheral sneaky that you may have here. At the end, I do like the idea of the 10 nylon. Hey, always better to be safe than sorry in this case. And that's a beautiful result. So thank you for sending the video in. I appreciate it. And that's a really great result.